This is One on One. We welcome Dr. Steve Kreutzer, who is Associate Professor of Computer Science at Bloomfield College. Good to see you, Doctor. Thank you. Nice to be here. Can we talk a little uh, cybersecurity? Absolutely. That's uh, an area of your expertise, right? Yes. What's the deal? Well, so cybersecurity is a very important field. It's extremely important because individuals, businesses, and our national security face growing threats, rapidly grow growing threats. How do you teach it? Uh, the way oh, by the way, when's too soon to teach it? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, I have sooner, the questions, I don't have the answers. <laughs> the sooner the better, and that's an issue in uh, K through 12. Really? Teaching students about computer science and computer security. But at Bloomfield College, what's the focus on the teaching? At Bloomfield College, because I've, I, I see this as a big issue for our society, and I feel everyone should become computer security literate, I feel that all the students should be able to learn about computer security. And uh, what I did to make that happen is develop a course that any student can take, a general education class. And it's very rare across the whole country to have a course that students can take without having at least a couple of years of uh, prerequisites. What are the keys to it? The keys to it are learning about how, the basics of how a computer works, about how, how the web works, uh, about networks. So learning some very basic technology, and by learning the basic technology, they can understand the threats. So is it for high school, college? What? I don't, I don't want to understand this. Well, it's a college class, and because I feel so strongly that students learn to need about, uh, they need to learn about computer security, and also because I want more students to pursue the study of computer science, we've, we're offering the class to high school students. So in the summer, we taught Newark Collegiate Academy students. And, Did uh, they get college credit? They got college credit. Really? Yes. Yeah. What kind of reaction did you get from most of those younger students? Could they, could they deal with it? Absolutely. They're great students. And also Bloomfield High School. This semester we're teaching 15 Bloomfield High School students. Uh, to what degree are 15, 16 year old students handling psychologically and emotionally the cybersecurity threats, the real life threats that you know better than most are out there? Can they handle that stuff? I think they can. I think they're. Uh they're pretty mature to be able to, to handle that and understand it. Because I tell you, there are a lot of adults that have a hard time dealing with it. And in that spirit, since most aren't going to get to take your course, we're watching right now, five or so keys to protecting ourselves from the kind of cyber-related problems. I don't even know if I want to call it. Why don't we do this? Protecting ourselves, is it from cyber attacks or cyber threats? Which way do you want to go here? Are they the same thing? Well, a threat is the possibility of an attack. OK, so five ways to protect ourselves from a cyber attack. So one is to, uh, is to have antivirus software installed on your computer, including Apple computers. Many people who have Apple computers think that they're immune from viruses, and they're not. Are some better than others? Um, I mean the vi antivirus. There, some may be better than others, but uh, the first thing is to have that software. Got it and to keep it up to date. Having a firewall installed and configured appropriately on your home network. Can you explain that to folks who may not even understand what that so means? So a firewall is a device that often runs on the computer or the router in your home. And what it does is it protects you from incoming threats, from people probing your computer and attacking it. Next. So uh, next is to back up your uh, data regularly. Uh, that's very important because one of the crimes is uh, ransomware. So what is it? Ransomware. So that's uh, a criminal encrypting or making the data on your computer unreadable and asking you to pay them $500 to restore it. What? That's a They comment. steal a your stuff and they say, you want it back, give me 500 bucks. That happens to individuals and companies as well. Most people pay it? Uh, Actually, uh, I don't know the percentages, but there are police departments that have been attacked oh and God. have paid it. So you're stuck if you don't, if you don't do if, what you just said, back it up. Absolutely. Anything else we can do? OK, so uh, knowing how Wi-Fi works. I get confused by Wi-Fi, meaning I'm always asking my wife, Jen, and she knows when I'm on the, you know, on the computer. She goes, look, I know it's a Wi-Fi related question, because I'm confused by 
one of them were down to Jersey Shore, like, what Wi-Fi system I'm supposed to be on? There are multiple options. Actually, there are multiple options and making sure you join the right network. So it's a, it's a relatively complicated thing, but one way to think about it, and not to be alarming, but uh, free Wi-Fi should be thought about as half-price sushi on what? Monday at a restaurant. Wait, hold on. Free Wi- this is going to be quoted somewhere. Free Wi-Fi should be thought of as half-price sushi. Sounds Wi-Fi, dangerous. Wi-Fi in public places is susceptible for being intercepted. Hold on, I'm hanging out at Starbucks, or for those who'd love Dunkin' Donuts or wherever you are, there it is. I'm good, no? <laughs> no. no? No? No. Because? So, if, so for example, if you put it this way, would you do your mobile banking from Starbucks? By the way, we have nothing Maybe against not. Starbucks. Sorry, sorry. Dunkin- uh, okay, sorry. but the point is... Airport better. Airport better, go ahead. Airport, same thing. So there are, there are all sorts of scams. So uh, uh, evil twin routers and rogue routers, these are scams where people set up routers and want you to log into them. And sometimes they even charge you money, so they steal your account information, uh, and then observe what you're doing. So with free Wi-Fi, it's, uh, you're susceptible to eavesdropping, that's all. So it's interesting, it's often used, hey, we have free Wi-Fi as a promotion, <laughs> and you're saying, wait a minute. It sounds great, but you really need to think twice. You have to think twice, yes. So uh, free Wi-Fi for reading the newspaper, that's fine. Free Wi-Fi for doing something that that you want to be secure is not so good. Uh, War driving is? Uh, So war driving is uh, what some criminals will do. They'll drive around to neighborhoods and try to find unsecured wireless networks in people's homes. How would they know that? by seeing if uh, they have, there are tools that can receive the signal from the Wi-Fi, and they could see if it has a password on it. So another part of the Wi-Fi is for home networks. So being able to secure your home network, which many people don't know how to do. So, that's, so it's good to have someone who knows something look at your router. Before I let you out here, should it scare us that it, it appeared that at certain points in time in the last year or so, certain major corporations and large institutional operations looked like some folks got into the system and mucked around? Well, if you're the CEO of Target or Home Depot or Ashley Madison. Uh, I'm sorry, Ashley Madison. Ashley I, Madison. I haven't heard of that. Is there such a thing? Oh, that, that's the website for... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no... Yeah, I've heard Madison. about it, but I just... So there are a bunch of CEOs, also the director of Office of Personnel Management, who, are, who lost their jobs as a result of breaches. <sighs> this stuff is going on. But we need to protect ourselves. And we can, can't we? We can. Actually, the way we can is to be educated. There it is. So the way we can is to read a book, take a class. And by the way, there are a million jobs by 2020 in the computer field that will be available for computer science graduates that won't be filled. So learn about computer security if you're a student or a professional. And there are great careers. Challenge. Zero unemployment. Zero unemployment. Zero this unemployment. Could be computer challenges security. create opportunities. Doctor, I want to thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Stephen Kreutzer, yeah. who is Associate Professor of Computer Science at uh, Bloomfield College. By the way, I was riding around Bloomfield College area. You guys have more development going on and helping that downtown Bloomfield area in so many ways. Good stuff. Oh, great. Um, keep it up. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by United Water, Investors Bank, New Jersey Sharing Network, Cone Resnick, ADP, United Airlines, and by Fedway Associates. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.